Hello students, welcome to our channel physics class and today we are going to study an interesting topic. We have given the AC voltage to the resistor, to the inductor and to the capacitor. Now we will give the AC voltage to a complete combination of these three. We will have the resistors, we'll have the, we will have the inductor and we will have the capacitor. So the AC voltage is given to a LCR circuit. Combination of these three and that two in series. So AC voltage is given to a series LCR circuit. So this is LCR circuit, resistance, capacitance and inductance and these three are connected in series that means these are connected end to end and these are connected to an AC voltage source because this is a sinusoidal varying voltage so wherever we are using this symbol that means it is a sinusoidal varying AC voltage. So the voltage is given by V is equal to Vm sin omega t where Vm is the maximum amplitude of the voltage and omega is the angular frequency. So this is sinusoidally varying voltage so we call it as the AC voltage so V is equal to Vm sin omega t and Q is the charge on the capacitor we can write down and I is the current at any time T. So we can use simply this is a circuit, this is a closed circuit so we can use Kirchhoff's loop rule to write down an equation. So using Kirchhoff's loop rule. So we can write down this is V then we go to resistance there is a voltage drop IR so this is minus IR then at the capacitor also there is voltage Q upon C and in the inductor also there is a voltage LDI upon DP. So Kirchhoff's loop rule we always write down for voltage. So the voltage source is giving us V from which IR voltage is taken by the resistance R, Q upon C voltage is taken by the capacitor C and LDI, LDI by DT is the voltage taken by the inductor L. So these three are reduced from the voltage V. So this is the source voltage, this is taken by resistance, this is taken by capacitor and this is taken by inductor and the sum of these should be equal to zero. That is Kirchhoff's loop rule or we can write on V is equal to all these are negative so take them on the right side. V is equal to IR plus Q upon C plus LDI by DT. So this is the equation we are getting. Now we can solve this equation using two methods. First method is the mathematical method or the analytical method that we call as analytical solution. And second is we can solve this simply using the phasor diagram. So whenever in the exam it is not defined that you have to use which method then the phasor diagram method is much easier. So always use the phasor diagram method but if it is specified that you have to solve the series LCR circuit using the analytical solution then only go for this because this is somewhat lengthy. So if you first will do the analytical solution so the equation we are having is V is equal to IR plus Q upon C. I am giving you here both the solutions so that you can easily go by it. Don't afraid for the analytical solution it is somewhat lengthy. So let us go. V is equal to IR plus Q upon C plus LDI by DT. Now we know the current I is equal to DQ upon DT the change in charge with respect to time. And here we are having di by dt then di by dt will be equal to just differentiate it once more. So this is dtq upon dt2. These are the three equations we have written. This whole equation we can write down in terms of charge. So put the value of i here, this value here and put the value of di by dt here. So what is the equation we will get? The equation we will get is L d2 q upon dt2 this we are writing first because this is second order differentiation plus r dq by dt this is the first order differentiation and there is no differentiation plus q upon c is equal to v and v is vm sin omega t so that is what our equation becomes right. <laughs> this is like the equation of a forced damped oscillator you have studied in 11th. 
then what is the equation of a forced damped oscillator so this is similar to the equation of a forced damped oscillator so we assume that the solution is let us say that the solution of this equation is q is equal to qm sin omega t plus theta okay let us assume that this is a general solution of this second order differential equation so now we have assumed this as q so we can do first differentiation dq upon dt simply differentiate this equation so this is qm sin omega t plus theta is cos omega t plus theta and if you differentiate with respect to t so omega will also be there so dq upon dt is equal to qm omega cos omega t plus theta and differentiate it once more so you will have t2 q upon dt2 so this is cos omega t plus theta will be minus sin omega t plus theta with one more omega so this is minus qm omega square sin omega t plus theta so now we have the value of q for the solution we have assumed we have dq by dt and we have d2q upon dt2 so we have these three values this is not tough but this is lengthy so you have to write it down two times then only you will be able to do it very easily so just put the value in this equation we have q we have dq by dt we have d2q upon dt2 so put all these value in this equation so we will have qm omega is taken as common then r cos omega t plus theta right then plus here we are having sin omega t and sin omega t so here we will have 1 upon here we'll have 1 upon omega c and here we will have omega l so we can write it down as the inductor capacitance sorry the capacitor resistor and the inductive resistor sin omega t plus theta this is equal to vm sin omega t i am explaining it to you once more because l t2q by dt2 is minus qm omega square so 1 qm omega we have taken as common then there is 1 omega left and 1 omega into L will make XL with minus. And here we have dq by dt as 1 qm omega is taken as common. Then r cos omega t plus theta. And here you will have q upon c. So q upon c if you do here if we take 1 omega then this is 1 upon omega c will give xc. So here xc is equal to 1 upon omega c and xl is equal to omega l. Only these two values we have substituted. So this becomes our equation. Now only one thing we have to remember here that we have to multiply this equation and divide this equation with z. Now what is this z? z is equal to under root of r square plus xc minus xl whole square how to remember this here you are having r so under root of r square plus xc minus xl whole square so multiply and divide the equation with z okay so we have to multiply it with z and we have to divide it with z So what we will have? We will have multiplied with z. So qm omega into z. Then this is r upon z because divided in with z. Cos omega t plus theta. Then plus xc minus xl upon z. Sin omega t plus theta. is equal to vm sin omega t because we have multiplied it with z and we have divided it with z. Now what we have to do? 
we have to put r upon z is equal to cos phi and xc minus xl upon z is equal to sin phi. So we are doing three things. First we will divide and multiply it with z. Now put r upon z is equal to cos phi and xc minus xl upon z is equal to sin phi. So sin phi upon cos phi will be 10 phi. So 10 phi will be xc minus xl upon r or phi will be tan inverse xc minus xl upon r. So put these values. So this is qm omega z. This is cos phi cos omega t plus theta plus sin phi sin omega t plus theta cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. This is the formula of cos a plus b. So this is cos a and what is b? So this is the formula cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. This is the formula of cos b minus a. So this is cos, this is b and a is this. So this is cos b minus a. And this is equal to Vm sin omega t. Right? So if we compare angle with the angle and this physical quantities. So we have to compare this Qm omega z is equal to Vm. And so sin omega t, we can also write it down as cos omega t plus pi by 2. Cos omega t minus pi by 2. So here cos omega t plus theta minus pi. And here cos omega t plus theta minus pi by 2. So this is our theta minus pi is equal to minus pi by 2. On comparing these two equation. Or you can write down theta is equal to pi minus pi by 2 and v is equal to i r so this is i m into z so comparing is i m is equal to q m omega so these are the two results we get first is theta is equal to pi minus pi by 2 and i m is equal to q m omega so here we get these two relations now because theta is equal to pi minus pi by 2 and Vm is equal to Qm omega z is equal to Imz or Im is equal to Qm omega. These are the results we have obtained. So now we can write down the current. So what is the current? Current I is equal to dq upon dt change in the position in the charge with respect to time so this is equal to qm omega cos omega t plus theta this was our current so instead of qm omega we can write on an im so this is im cos omega t plus theta this is what we assumed with the general solution and here what we are getting i is equal to im cos omega t plus theta. Now put the value of theta. i is equal to im cos theta is pi minus pi by 2. So this is omega t plus pi minus pi by 2. So i is equal to im sin omega t plus pi. And our V is equal to Vm sin omega t. That means the current is leading with the voltage with the angle phi. And here I m is equal to Vm upon z is equal to Vm upon the value of z is under root of r square plus xc minus xl whole square. Right? And phi is equal to tan inverse of xc minus xl upon r.
so that is how we can say that the current is leading with the voltage with the angle phi so this was our analytical solution and now we do the same thing using the phase diagram solution so in order to draw the phase diagram solution we take our voltage v in this direction and say this is a voltage corresponding to the resistor r so this is our vr and for inductor we know that this voltage is for inductor this is the voltage corresponding to inductor vl and this is corresponding to the capacitor vc and for the resistor the current and voltage are in the same direction so this is i so these two voltages are perpendicular to each other and the angle here is say omega t plus pi so what we assume we assume that let the i is equal to i m sin omega t plus pi that means the phase difference between the voltage and the current is phi because v is equal to vm sin omega t plus pi because v is equal to vm sin omega t so let i is equal to this that means the phase difference between the voltage and the current is phi so phi is equal to the phase difference between v and i the phase difference between v and i and vl vr and vc are the voltage across the inductor the resistor in the capacitor and v is the voltage across the source so from here we can see that vr is parallel to i we can see that vr is parallel to i and vc is pi by 2 behind i because the rule is that it goes in the, that it goes in a clockwise direction if it is behind so vc is pi by 2 behind i and vc is and vl is pi by 2 ahead of i So it is in the anti-clockwise direction. So that is why we have drawn it like this, because for the resistor, the current and voltage are in the same direction. These are parallel to each other. For inductor, the voltage is ahead of the current, so it goes in the anti-clockwise direction. And for the capacitor, it is behind the current, so it goes in the so it goes in the clockwise direction. So this is VC, this is VL, this is VR. so that is the result of what we have done the ac current given to the resistor the capacitor the resistor the inductor and the capacitor so that is what we concluded from there and using this we have drawn this phasor diagram now the length of the phasors we can write down as for v for the resistance This is equal to I into R. So we get out of V makes them because V M is equal to I into R. So V M R is equal to I M into R, and V M C is equal to so this is the maximum value of the voltage. So V R M is equal to I M into R. Similarly, V C M is equal to I M into X C. This is the capacitive resistance, and V L M is equal to I M into X L. That is the inductive resistance. This is equal to omega C, and this is equal to one upon omega. L. This is equal to one upon omega C, and this is equal to omega L. 
So the total voltage is the combination of all these, the resistor voltage plus the capacitor voltage plus the inductor voltage. So VC and VL are along the same line and in the opposite direction. So we have, we can combine them into a single phasor whose magnitude is VCM minus VLM. So these two we can combine with a single phasor and this is VCM minus VLM. So we'll draw a single phasor because these are in the same line in the opposite direction. So now we can write down that the total magnitude will be the sum of the resultant maximum magnitude. The resultant maximum amplitude of the voltage will be equal to the maximum voltage due to resistance plus the combination of these two. You can also consider that to be as a triangle. So if this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose one side is VRM and other side is VCM plus VLM, VCM minus VLM, then you can write on this equation using the Pythagoras theorem. So Vm square is equal to now put the value of VRM. What is VRM? VRM is equal to IM into R. So this is equal to IM into R whole square and this is IMXC and this is minus IMXL whole square. We have simply substituted the value of VRM, VCM and VLM from these equations to here. Simply substitute this in here. So what will get us this? So we have Vm square is equal to Im square. We can take as common from all the terms. So what is left inside the bracket is R square plus Xt minus Xl whole square because Im square we have already taken as common. Right. So this is the equation Vm square is equal to Im square and in bracket R square plus Xt minus Xl whole square. So we can calculate the value of I here. So this is square, so you have to take a square root. So this is Vm upon, if you take the square root of this, then this is under root of R square plus Xc minus Xl whole square. And now you can compare this equation to the Ohm's law because I is equal to V upon R or Im is equal to Vm upon R. So this I m is equal to V m. This whole is the resistance. So we can call this a resistance or in general we call it as impedance. Because that is a combination of resistor plus capacitor resistance plus inductive resistance. So we call it as impedance. And the simple and the symbol for impedance is Z. So Z is equal to under root of R square plus X C minus X L whole square. So now we can draw a triangle. So if this side is Z, then this side be equal to R and this should be equal to Xc minus Xl. So this triangle satisfies this equation or you can draw this triangle from this equation. So Z square is equal to R square plus Xc minus Xl whole square simply using the Pythagoras theorem. And the angle here should be phi. This pi is the angle which we have taken as a phase difference. So from here if you calculate the tangent of pi, the slope of this angle pi, then this is equal to Xc minus Xl corresponds to Vcm minus Vlm. Vcm minus Vlm and upon this R. Or 10 pi, we can write down from this triangle as Xc minus Xl upon R. So both of these are true. And this diagram we call as impedance diagram. Right? So from here if you see, because this side is Xc minus Xl. So if Xc is greater than Xl, then this quantity will be positive. And the circuit is predominantly capacitive. And for the capacitance, the current in the circuit lead the source voltage V. So that means I should be leading the voltage V. 
and if xc is less than xl that means our circuit should be predominantly inductive circuit and for the inductor the current i lags behind v so it is decided that x is greater than xl or x is smaller than xl then the circuit is predominantly capacitive or inductive and the voltage will and the current will lead the voltage v or current will lag behind the voltage v so using all these we can draw phase diagram now So draw the phase diagram. Draw a horizontal axis and divide this horizontal axis into three parts. So here you can have V or I, and here you can have the angle omega t. So first you draw the voltage V. so this is the voltage v and then you can draw whatever is the maximum amplitude of this voltage v and then you draw the current so say the angle is phi the zero This is zero. This is pi, and this is two pi, and this is our voltage, and this corresponds to our current. And here somewhere you can take at any instant omega t one at any instant t one. So this phasor we can draw for the voltage as we always draw. That is a default one for the voltage. This is v, and this angle is always omega t one. So this is a phase diagram for the current I, and the angle between these two is given by phi. So phi is the phase difference between the current and the voltage. So this corresponds to a voltage. This green one corresponds to the current. So V is given with. So this is how we can draw the phase diagram of V and I. So this is a graph of V and I versus omega t. for the series lcr circuit and here as you can see that we have taken that the i is leading v with pi by 2 so if it is leading it is going in the anti clockwise direction then it should always be a capacitive that means xc is greater than xl and what happens if xl is greater than xc if xl is greater than xc then we have to draw i in the clockwise direction because i will be lagging behind v so in this way you can take the condition and you can draw the phase diagram and you can easily get the solution either by using the analytical solution or by using the phase diagram so that is all for today if you want to study all such lectures in very detail in a very easiest form then please like and share and subscribe to our channel so that you can easily get notifications for more such lectures Thank you.